I'll admit, I felt anxious when I first started this project, mostly because I'd never done character animations before. I usually just did simple animations that were the requirement for classes, but I thought to myself, eh, it's the undergrad. It's supposed to be a big thing that we use a bunch of skills we've learned over our years at this college. So I wanted to make something special. I've always had a fascination for writing, and I've made many stories over the years, but this was probably the first real story that I've ever wanted to make into an actual animated television show. So I thought, this should be, this will be a good premise for this underground project of mine. It was simple at first since I've always really had these characters in my head for a while now. Since junior high, in fact, I've been making this story of mine. The only real problem is I've never been that confident in my humanoid characters. But now I can safely say that I'm actually starting to enjoy how they're looking. Even though they're a bit more realistic than I intentionally wanted, but figures can't be choosers in this case, I suppose. I most enjoyed making the masks because ever since the beginning I've always been confident in those designs, mostly because I've always been confident in making nice looking faces. Heck, some of my earlier animation projects have just been mostly just unique looking faces that animate and contort into silly things. The first big step for this undergrad was the Pitch Bible, which helped me define these characters more along with the story itself. It was fun and probably the easiest part of this whole undergrad project. The animation started off fine. The first two scenes weren't that hard to do. It was when I got to scene three that things got a bit more complicated. I had to draw a lot due to the backgrounds, but the animation for them were simple enough. And it also brought me to one of my biggest flaws as an animator. I'm not the best with walking or leg animations, it turns out. But I can safely say that by the end of the semester, I've grown more comfortable doing them. And this was a great learning experience for it, honestly. Though, if you ask me personally, I do think they could use a bit more of a fixer-upper after this. The rest of the scenes, thankfully, weren't as complicated, at least drawing-wise. Movement-wise, there was a few complications, like at first I didn't understand fight choreography, but I got the hang of it, I'd like to think, and a few other movements do look a bit stilted even in this end project, but I plan on having to fix those like later over the summer, so no real complications there. All in all, this was a fun and challenging project. I had my ups, my downs, and plenty of in-betweens. I hope that I can make this an even better project in the future, so then I can add it to a portfolio for companies who either A, like my work and want to help me make this show, or B, think of it as an opportunity to hire me. Either way, I plan on doing big things for this in the future, and I hope you enjoy my animation.
Hello, my name is Jordan Galley. My undergrad project is about an imaginative little lizard named Kenny. I had a different idea originally, but due to a separate project I'm working on using the same character, it made sense to tie them in together since he's in both of them. Because of this, most of the previs work was already done. The story is very simple. We're shown the inside of a cave and see that a small fire-breathing lizard lived inside. He looks around, digs through his toys, finds a pair of wooden wings, and runs off outside to play. Due to time constraints and the variety of issues popping up in early 2020, there is much I wanted to do for the project but couldn't complete everything. I'd like to add sound effects and color when I finish and polish the animation up. Thank you. Hi, I'm Laura Garcia, and for my undergrad, I collaborated with Professor Ann Elder to art direct, um, do projection design, and to do various animations for the fall 2020 production of She Kills Monsters. She Kills Monsters is based in the 90s, and the main character gains a better understanding of her deceased sister through a fantasy adventure game called Dungeons and Dragons. Ann and I looked into other productions of the play, and none of them featured animation or an animation that interacts with actors. I chose to rig and animate in Toon Boom Harmony to challenge myself with a software that I'm not completely fluent in. The difficulty and uniqueness of the required production assets was an exciting challenge. The very first thing that we designated during our first production meeting was a color palette. I decided that the two worlds should have a contrasting color palettes to help highlight the difference between reality and fantasy. For fantasy, I thought cooler saturated colors would go pretty well against the earthy tones for reality but not be so jarring when played side to side. Once all the production staff was given a color palette to reference, we moved on to software. We chose Resolum because we felt it was the most efficient way to make time animation with real time sound and acting. I drew up concepts for Tiamat. Tiamat is the big dragon final boss and gave each head a design in a mock color. The reason that they are all side profiles is because Tiamat never faces another way. Next were the major backgrounds. This and the heads and the dragon in general were the most time consuming due to the realistic rendering of each piece. The semi-realistic animations such as the maps, the crash, and the effects were able to be produced fairly quickly and efficiently. Rigging was a lot of guesswork and frustration, but I gained a greater understanding of the mechanics to make any further future attempts succeed quicker. Thank you. 
Hello, my name is Gareth Brewer, and my undergrad project is a 3D animated short film called Ersatz. Ersatz is about a fantasy rat creature whose name is Rivet, and Rivet mourns its dead brethren by hanging their names in its home, a desert cavern. Rivet is then hunted and killed, and then gruesomely displayed by this villainous voyeuristic robot that has been stalking it. The film is visually inspired by films like The Secret of Nim, The Dark Crystal, The Mouse Guard Comics, and John Carpenter's The Thing. The short's purpose was to challenge my 3D modeling and storytelling skills while setting me up with a portfolio ready to be submitted to graduate schools. I created the story and a large majority of the assets, with a little help from Melissa Slinnis with two props, the mushroom and the bag, seen in the opening shot. I plan to move on from DSU to grad school and later become a director or creature artist in the 3D animation field.
Hello, my name is Erin Griebel, and for my undergrad project, I created an animated short about a doe and a beast. My story idea came from a project I had recently worked on, and I was really wanting to bring the characters to life. I did not recreate the original story. However, I created, with the help from my professor, Daniel Seaman, a little take of the two characters playing an intriguing game of tag. I wanted to create something that could possibly be seen on either Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network. I've always enjoyed the animated series they would create, and I wanted to try replicating what they do. I wanted my characters to be likable right away, and I wanted the character designs to look simple and the backgrounds even simpler to show more emphasis on the characters themselves. Hello, I'm Riley Lentz, and this is my undergrad project. Trouble at the Warehouse is a 2D animated project that began production in August of 2019. I worked on the project in both Art D386 and Art D442, with the help of a few of my classmates. The film follows Boss Cat, the owner of the warehouse. In his warehouse, he has droids that do all the physical work. Something goes wrong this particular day, and the droids short out and begin to cause chaos. Influences for the short include cartoons like Ed and Eddie and Tom and Jerry. The main character of the short is Boss Cat, the owner of the warehouse. He was also the very first character to be designed. Originally, I had envisioned him to be a short, stocky man, but as I was creating rough character designs, I began to expand into using animals. I gravitated towards the stubby bipedal cat design. Once I chose to use the cat, it also went through multiple redesigns. Boss Cat is heavily based on a Persian. The second characters to be designed were the droids. I went through the same design process as I did with Boss Cat. I wanted to convey that the droids were not the highest quality of products, hence their frail frame and clumsy nature. Interestingly, the character design that my professor and fellow classmates gravitated towards was the space fish. They are more or less just piranhas. They are often seen corralling around Boss Cat because they see him as a big tasty meal just out of reach. Yes Cat was the final character to be designed. He was also added towards the end of the pre-production phase. 
During the last presentation of Art D386, it was suggested adding another character in the form of a Yes Man for Boss Cat. Yes Cat is based on a British short hair, as seen in his big eyes and fluffy cheeks. He is also the comic relief character of the short. Storyboarding began around the middle of 386. I first created a rough thumbnail storyboard on paper. Once the story was flushed out, I then scanned the boards onto my computer and drew them out again digitally. After I digitized the boards, I put them together in a rough animatic. After the late addition of Yes Cat, I reworked parts of the storyboards to include him. While I was working on storyboards, the backgrounds were being worked on by my teammates. The backgrounds were heavily inspired by those in early episodes of Ed and Eddie and the minimalistic backgrounds of Chuck Jones. After the animatic was done, it was time to move on to pencil tests, and then later, line work. In order to animate more efficiently, different parts of the characters were animated on separate layers, so parts like the head and arms would often be done separately from the body. At this point of time, the animation has not finished, but all that needs to be done is coloring, editing, and sound design. To end things off, I would like to thank Professor Daniel Seyman and my teammates Christian, Liz, Reese, and Alan. Without them, the project wouldn't have gotten to the point that it is at now.
Hi, I'm Liz Gwalney, and for my undergrad project, I created a handful of detailed 3D sculpts with the goal of becoming proficient in ZBrush. Before this year began, I'd never used the program ZBrush, which is software that specializes in 3D sculpting. I wanted to learn how to use this program because sculpting has become a standard for creating highly detailed 3D models, and ZBrush is universally used for this method. Dakota State doesn't offer any courses with ZBrush, so my entire learning experience was rigorous self-teaching through internet resources. The sculptures I made are from original concepts created for the purpose of this project, as well as a couple of pre-existing concepts. I wanted to really dig into what ZBrush could do, so my pipeline was almost exclusively limited inside of it. This included the model creation, texturing, posing, and the rendering with the use of Photoshop for final compositing and Maya for turntable rendering. I didn't give too much thought into my original concepts because it was more about learning techniques during the sculpting phase than visual development. I drew a bunch of designs and expanded on a few to give me a good starting place before ultimately letting the sculpt shape itself. Since these models were sculpted with printing in mind, as opposed to animation, they didn't require low resolution variations or any projected details because proper topology flow isn't necessary if the model doesn't deform. For the sake of detail, these models are purposefully left dense, ranging into millions of tries. I've only really scratched the surface for what this program could do, and there's still plenty more for me to uncover, but these past few months have given me a really solid start. Hi, my name is Alyssa Salinas. I'm a digital arts and design major specifying in production animation at Dakota State University. This is my undergrad project, and for my undergrad project, I decided to do backgrounds and landscapes. The reason why I wanted to do this is because I, I really like doing this, and I've learned a lot from doing this. I learned a lot about perspective and a lot about time management. This semester I am taking 18 credits and most of those classes are project-based classes. So there would be times where I would be working on one thing when I should have been working on another. But I feel like I did overcome that and I did manage to get what I wanted to get done. And these are the backgrounds that I created and I hope you enjoy them. Thank you.
So my name is Miranda Wiedemann and this is my undergraduate research project. The basis of my project is a hypothetical tattoo convention for the Sioux Falls area. I am heavily influenced by tattoo culture um, and have attended several different conventions myself, such as the ones in Minneapolis and Milwaukee. There are no tattoo conventions in South Dakota, to my knowledge through research, so I decided to make one for my project. I started out by creating a beautiful design to become the logo for my convention. Most conventions use some piece of artwork instead of a traditional logo. After creating this South Dakota inspired piece using things like the state flower, I then created promotional items such as the poster that you see on screen. I then continued making promotional items by transferring the design onto things like t-shirts that would be sold at the venue. I created stickers that could be sold prior and during the venue's events uh, that included a hashtag that would create some social media presence. I also created things like billboards, advertisements, and I even went and attended a tattoo convention and took photos that would act as featured artists. As you continue to watch the slideshow going on screen, you'll see that there's also an event map that shows the Sioux Falls Convention Center and the setup of booths for the event. Uh, on the back side of the map, it would show the corresponding artist or studio for each booth number, as well as sponsors and other things like concessions and bathrooms. Another key point to my uh, brand for this superior tattoo arts convention was my use of grayscale. It was very hard to pick a color palette based on tattoos because there are so many different types uh, such as traditional, neo-traditional that all have their own color palettes. So rather than pick a particular one to portray, I decided to go grayscale so that your viewer could imagine what color the tattoos would be or what they would get as their tattoos. A lot of my plans for this project didn't come to fruition as a result of the corona pandemic that's currently happening, um, such as creating the actual stickers and shirts. Uh, however, I do think that I did the best that I possibly could given the circumstances. Um, and I would like to thank DSU for helping me get through these four years towards my degree. And I'd like to thank you for watching this video and viewing my undergraduate project. Hello, my name is Andrew Bender, and today I am presenting my undergrad research project titled More Than the Disease. When selecting a topic for my undergrad research project, I wanted to do something that was bigger than myself and would have a real world impact. I eventually landed on the topic of mental health because it's a topic that is close to home for me and it affects just about everybody in some way, shape, or form.
to discuss this topic, I decided to make a pseudo ad campaign that would really push the conversation forward and give people a jumping off point to talk about mental illness. For the first portion of my ad campaign, I decided to do some poster advertisements like those you would see in subway tunnels or in magazines. What I did to do these posters, I started off by selecting my models. And with model selection, I was very careful to be sure to select models that had either overcome or are currently dealing with some form of mental illness because I felt the more transparent and connected I was with everything I was doing, the better the project would be. So I took my pictures, I put them into Photoshop, I applied a color to each of them to sort of give them their own little theme but connect them through the color scheme of CMY or cyan, magenta, and yellow. And then I took a phrase that each of my models gave me and the phrase is something that either helped them or that they would tell themselves whenever they were like in the weeds dealing with the mental health issues that they each had. And I sort of put that on repetition in the background, just sort of repeating over and over. So sort of act as them saying it to themselves in their head, like just saying it over and over to sort of calm themselves down or give themselves reassurance, whatever it, they needed at that point in time. And that's sort of all I did for the posters. I sort of think it's, um, it's simple but effective because it really strikes at the heart of the issue. And I think they turned out really well. For the second part of my ad campaign, I decided to cr start creating sort of physical elements that people could hold and like have, because I felt it was important to have that physical um, element to sort of provide a bridge for them to talk about this. So I started with t-shirts. And for the t-shirts, I sort of did the same thing that I did with the posters where I, again, took portraits of my models, except this time, instead of having them be a very serious stoic face, I decided to include a candid smile picture where they were just laughing or smiling at something we were talking about during the photo session. Because I realized that if I made all of it too serious, I was playing into the sort of stereotypes that I'm trying to break through this proje project. So I wanted them smiling, I wanted them happy to prove that they are more than this sort of caricature of a mentally ill person. So I took the smiling photos and with that I decided to include hand-drawn elements on top of the photos to really keep that sort of fun um, feeling for the portraits. And I chose colors that corresponded to the posters. That way there's that connection throughout the campaign. And then I just sort of went to work drawing and I made sure to always check in with each of the models saying like, do you like this? Does this look good to you? That kind of thing. Just really making sure that they were okay with what the final product was and that they were happy with the result. And then from the t-shirts, I then transitioned into another physical object that is a little vinyl sticker. And the vinyl stickers I felt were important because they're so plentiful and easy that every single person that may be dealing with this could take a little physical reminder that they do have like this other thing about them besides this label that they've been given, whether they're anxious or depressed, they have this other thing that they can say, well, actually I like this or I like that. And that little sticker could be a constant reminder of that, that they are more than their disease. The vinyl stickers are straight from the t-shirt design. They're the little like thought bubbles from the t-shirt design because those are the happy thoughts that are making the person smile. So I decided to turn those into their own element and sort of everybody can have their own happy thought that keeps them going and reminds them that they are more than their mental illness.
if I had more time and more resources, I would have liked to expand upon this idea and include more photos of more people from different age groups, different um, backgrounds, just because this topic affects so many people, it's hard to narrow it down to just a few. So I would like to really expand this and make it a very expansive campaign if I were to go on with it. Same thing with the um, vinyl stickers and t-shirts, you could expand it even more to include even more different hobbies or things that set people apart from their illness and just really make it a very fleshed out sort of idea that everybody can connect with and relate to. But at the end of the day, my goal in making this was that it would give people pause whenever they hear someone say, I have a mental illness, instead of just saying, oh, they must be sad all the time because they're depressed, they must not like getting out of bed in the morning because they're depressed, that kind of thing. They give them pause and say, well, what else are they? Because they are more than just that. They're more than this stereotype that's been given to them because of this label. And that's the goal of my undergrad project is to sort of push that conversation and get people to realize that they are more than their disease. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jasmine Lucero, and I did my undergraduate project on the idea of being plant powered. So a plant based diet is not necessarily vegetarian. It consists of mostly or entirely foods derived from plants. There are usually no animal products or very few for some diets. Everybody's different, so it just depends. Um, I've been a vegan for a little over two years now and it's changed my life for the better for sure. With vegan companies figuring out how to make plants taste more like animal products, the times have officially changed and I believe we are moving forward as a nation. Uh, Plant-based and veganism has been a growing movement lately and I thought that this would be a great opportunity to design something to spread the idea a little more, especially through fashion and uh, social media. So my first thought was to uh, create apparel. So I made my design and it was obviously inspired by plants and I wanted to also make it seem sporty or a little aggressive using stronger font for the word powered underneath uh, what is supposed to be the word plant spelled with different vegetables and fruits. Um, I made different colors, long sleeve and short sleeve shirts and it was a lot of fun to make. I then created a blipper to promote the idea using our smartphones. Um, Blipper is an app that helps promote different companies and their designs using three-dimensional uh, landscapes. I included some screenshots on here of some of the, uh, the design elements I used. Um, in the program, you can download the app and scan the t-shirt design, and it, it pum comes up with a three-dimensional um, kind of world to, to go through with my design and what I'm trying to represent. My next step was making posters to spread uh, awareness. Um, I made my posters for social media to get people intrigued and to click on, on what I wanted to, them to go to. I gathered some of my plant-based friends and did a little shoot inspired by the plants that we eat and the plants that we are around. Um, if it's one thing I've learned about being plant-based, it's that plants, edible and non-edible, give us everything we need to thrive. And this is actually what inspired my first poster. Um, this poster is of my friend Kaylee riding her bike. Um, being plant-based has encouraged me to get outside more, especially after my weight loss. I lost 70 pounds in a year after being vegan and I started to feel effects months into starting my diet. I gained more energy and craved being active and outside. This one is unlike the others because it uh, shows the nature part of plants instead of the kind we eat. My other two posters um, 
or have to deal with food. So this was a nice change of pace for me and it was a lot of fun to try to make movement within the piece. That brings us to our next poster, which is uh, of my yogi best friend, Peyton. She's also showing the more balanced and active part of being plant-based while also promoting vegetables. All of these posters have an interesting concept of mystery with the heads missing off of some of my models. I thought this would grab the attention of my viewers a little more often. In this one, I tried to do more blues and just contrast in the other one just a bit more. In all of these, you'll see lines going across the page just to make it a little more fun and have um, a little more motion through the pieces. So this last one here is of my friend Gabby. She is very uh, passionate about her food and making it look good so she can post it on social media. And um, that's kind of like a, a branding for some people. Uh, it demonstrates her love for fruits while she lays in a bowl of fruit, actually, uh, with a raspberry head. I wanted to use bright colors in all these posters as another way to catch the attention of anybody um, who happens to be scrolling down their feed. I wanted to go for a different color scheme in this one with more... Uh, reds and warmer temperatures. She gave me a lot to work with since she was wearing the white shirt of the three models I, I posed. And finally here I have my designs for a business card and postcard if anybody was looking to do business with me. Um, yeah, they're pretty simple. Just my design. I put some texture into the postcard just to make it a little more realistic and fun. Uh, I think my next step would be to create a website and be able to sell my design on other types of apparel. This project was a lot of fun for me and I learned a lot about the difference between organic and geometric designs and also the effect each of those has on a piece of artwork. Thank you so much for your time and I hope you enjoyed.
to a place. 